Hi, I am Lars Nedland from White Void and as evidenced by my background I collect vinyl records. Um, so I thought I'd sit down and uh, show you a few uh, albums from my collection that have meant a lot to me and had uh, a huge impact on me both uh, as a performing artist, writing artist and uh, as a fan and a human being. I thought we'd start with uh, one of the genres that has made the uh, most, you know, profound impact uh, on me uh, as a music lover, and that's prog, um, progressive music. Um, I found prog really early because of my dad. My dad is a music journalist, uh, and he brought a lot of good stuff home. And one of the albums he brought home was this one, Octopus by Gentle Giant and what really you know captured me um, with this album was the sense of melody and the sense of freedom in the writing. Uh, I mean this is the album that showed me um, what a melody can do and what um, you know a composition can do. Uh, it felt like it didn't have any restraints and, and it, it had um, a freedom that I really hadn't encountered before. So this was this was uh, one of the albums that kind of opened that to me. Next year, uh, 1973, um, saw the release of my favorite album of a different progressive artist, namely Jethro Tull. This is a passion play, um, and I know um, a lot of people love uh, Aqualung and Thick as a Brick uh, more than this one, but to me, this is the best uh, album by Jethro Tull. The whole thing is uh, put up and set like like a play. So this is the first pressing. So it even has, you know, the theatre program in it. 73. The next year, 1974, th these were good years for, for progressive music, um, this album was released, Mirage by Camel. Um, and this album contains one of my favourite songs of all time, which is Lady Fantasy. Um, a 12 minute odyssey of, of uh, amazing ideas, fantastic uh, melodies and compositions, uh, amazing time signature, signature changes, just a lot of amazing stuff to, to um, come back to again and again. And, and I do, I mean, I've, I've been listening to this album um, since I was a kid uh, and I still listen, it, uh, listen to it uh, to this day. So yeah, amazing album. Another amazing album that came out in 1974 um, uh, and I have to say this is probably my favorite album of all time um, is Red by King Crimson. Um, I know a lot of people love, you know, in the court of the Crimson King and even, you know, Bible Black with Lord's Tongues in Aspic and I, I love all those albums too, but this one, this one's special. Um, there, there's something about both the, the songwriting and the production on this that makes it sound like, I mean, it, it could have been done today almost. Um, it, uh, it's timeless. And then I want to jump from 1974 and up to 1992 um, because even though I, I think the best progressive music uh, came from, from the late 60s and the uh, uh, early 70s, early to mid 70s, um, progressive music had an amazing revival uh, in the early 90s and uh, in the center of this revival was a, a, a small record company in Norway called Colors from uh, a small town called Sheen, uh, and they released, among other uh, other albums, two albums with two Swedish bands that I really love. One of them is uh, Landberg, Riktigt Ekta, uh, but the real gem from that era and from that record company was this one, Hybris by Englagor. Uh, this is the original from 92, and um, I really, really love this this album. It's got it. It it feels like the forest in music form in a way. 
Um, there's just uh, an immense beauty in everything having to do with, with this album, from, from the cover to the, um, to the songwriting, to the production, to the instrumentation. There's just there's nothing that I do not love. Yeah, these are some of my uh, favorites. I uh, hope that you maybe found some inspiration in this to, to go and check out some of these bands again if you've listened to them before or if you haven't listened to them before. Just go check it out, you know, uh, there are so many gems to find. <laughs>